Frank Barney Marama's rise from simple sailor to self-appointed great chief of Fiji has been tumultuous. At times the Commodore has alienated his nearest neighbours while also seemingly winning the hearts and minds of everyday Fijians. Iskander Razak looks at his rise to power. Man of the Fijian people. Rugby and netball enthusiast. I still love coming along and watching. Yes, yes, very much. Especially when my grandchildren play. And devoted family man. These are the ways Frank Baini Marama wants to be viewed, but his critics describe him as something else entirely. I am a military man, but uh, uh, what does dict uh, dictator mean to you? It was 14 years ago that Frank Baini Marama first made international headlines. Under his direction, the army took control of key positions in the island nation and then the nation itself. I have, with much reluctance, assumed executive authority of the country and henceforth declared martial law. Six months later, Lasinia Ngarase was appointed prime minister and Commodore Baini Marama stepped away from power, but not for long. In between leadership, military and international security courses in Australia and the United States, the military man was an outspoken critic of government policy. In 2006, that friction ignited into Fiji's fourth coup. The tipping point was the Ngarase government's plan to give George Spate and his gang amnesty for the previous coup. As of 6 o'clock this evening, the military has taken over the government, has executive authority, and the running of this country. This time, the Commodore would not be giving up the top job. Promises for democratic elections were made, then changed. The reason, according to Frank Baini Marama, was that only he could usher through the changes needed to give Fiji the stability it needs to end its coup culture. The military is the only entity that can bring about the reforms. The politicians can't bring about the reforms, for obvious reason. Uh, they are politicians, they would love to stay in power, and because of that, uh, they don't like uh, much to bring about changes that would remove them from power. Politicians aren't the only ones Frank Baini Marama does not trust. The soldiers are extremely aggressive. They're trying to stop us filming them outside the Prime Minister's residence. Censorship has been a cornerstone of what some jokingly call the Baini Marama Republic. Journalists have been deported, and so have critics and diplomats. The constitution was dissolved, church leaders rounded up for being too critical, and judges have been sacked. They certainly don't like criticism. They, there are certain sections within the government who really uh, cherish the idea of having control of the media. For us to bring about these reforms, as I've said, we need to we need to stop all uh, uh, people speaking out against the government and its reform. In response, Fiji has been isolated diplomatically and economically by its nearest neighbours. It was suspended from the Commonwealth and the Pacific Islands Forum. But that's had little effect on the military's grip on power, and Frank Baini Marama has his supporters too. He is doing what is best for Fiji people. That's what he believes and uh, he has done that. On the surface though, Fiji does not look like a military dictatorship. Australian tourists still flock to its beaches. And while poverty is rife and infrastructure is falling apart, most average Fijians seem to support him. We really see the benefit of uh, what the government's been doing. And in recent months, Frank Baini Marama's Fiji has slowly been moving away from its pariah status. Its neighbours have agreed to let Fiji back into the Pacific Islands Forum if the election is deemed free and fair. 